Nana, we're going to take a break. Yes, we are going to take a break. And when we come back, oh, drum roll. We have the amazing, gorgeous Stephanie Benson in All our midst. And today, words. yes, <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be having a very long conversation. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. You're still watching Entertainment Review live on Metro Television. Welcome back from the break. You're watching Entertainment Review on Metro TV. My name is Desmond Okrekudan. So Desifedi in the star. We're here with Nanaya Tanobwache and Harriet Adi. And we mentioned earlier before the break that we've got a guest for our discussion segment on the show today. Before I mention her name, you can actually uh, send us your messages. Yes, let us know where you're watching the show from, any message that you've got for our guest in a, that I'm going to be introducing a, uh, in a bit. So our guest, ladies and gentlemen, Ghanaian born, Straight from the UK, you know, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Stephanie Benson is our guest for today, and she has joined us here. Hello, Stephanie. Hello, darling. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You're looking. What's Where? the word? What's the word? You're so cute, though. Fab. You honestly, I mean, you look 12, but you know. <laughs> 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 but you are really cute. <laughs> uh, he's confused. Um, he, 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 he's you. not going to ask any you question know, again. No, I mean, I mean, you're still kissable. Don't worry. Yeah, you, it's he's all still good. Let's see. Ah, you? Why are you? Are you there? <laughs> you know, I see. Thank you very much. Still <laughs> kissable. Okay. Maybe he didn't hear it. Have you oh, kissed right. him? No. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, no. no. He, How about you? Oh. No. So nobody's kissed you. No. Oh, why? No, no, no. Okay. no. Uh, we have boyfriends. You know what? At this yeah, point. <laughs> But it's great. Thank it's you. Thank nice. you very much for the compliment. Um, <laughs> so um, we we in March um, this year, 2022. What have you been up to? Um, yeah. 2022. We're only in the second month. I mean, not very much, really, because mm. I think in the UK, we're only just starting to okay. come out of this COVID mm -hmm. oppression. Yeah. And um, and I, you know, I'm sort of trying to spread my wings. Um, yeah. Unfortunately for me, my daughter was pregnant as well. Okay. My oldest one is pregnant. Okay. So wow. I had to sort of stay away from people as well. So I oh. think all through the pandemic, the only place I've been to is Gibraltar. And, and we went to um, the yeah, family I, home. I saw that, yeah. Yeah, and we went to the family home in, in, in France. But that was it. I've been home okay. two and a half years, cooped up. Causing Two trouble and on Instagram <laughs> <laughs> and Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see all of that on Twitter, on Twitter also. But you are one of the, the musicians we've got in this country um, with a very great... I mean, if it's we are work, I would say CV. Mm -hmm. it, it, is, it is huge. If you look back at your career when you started, we're you looking forward to this day that, yeah, I'm still going to be here. You know, because mm -hmm. people started in two, three years. I mean, they are, we, we can't find them again. Well, I mean, think that the thing with the music industry is you have to go in there with love. If you're going there wanting to make money, mm. um, then you will go out very quickly because you lose the passion for it when you start to make any kind of money. Um, and I've always loved music. I mean, I, I grew up with music. My father taught me how to play the piano. I mean, I went to the National Academy of Music. So I was predominantly a musician first before I became a, a singer. And I was signed at a very young age as well to Stockade and Waterman. Um, and so music is something I love. So I knew whatever it is, whether mm. I was going to be loved, whether I was going to be hated, whether I had hits, whether I didn't, I'm still always going to be in music. Um, okay. and, and you only as, as good as you practice. You see, some people just, when they become famous, they stop practicing, mm. stop learning. You never stop learning in music. You know, there's always so many different ways of figuring out who you are, because you evolve as you go on, you know, yeah. Yeah. as a musician. And I've evolved. I mean, I was doing pop, like, with song like, gotta keep on, gotta keep on, gotta keep on. You know, like, you know, like, and now, yeah. I mean, it's more vocal, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you evolve. And if you want to go with it, yes, you can. That's mm. why people like Madonna are still there. Yeah, you know? and I was even coming back to, to, the, to the music type. I mean, from back then when you started, and now we, uh, we're listening to, uh, you know, Go To Go. Yes. And, you know, those others. And there are their changes, how you've adapted you know, through all of those times, even to this particular time. How have you done it? Well, the thing is, I have a great ear for music, and I'm not, I don't like to be put in a, in a pocket. So, I mean, I've done pop music. I've done dance music. Mm. I mean, some of my dance songs have actually been in the world charts to, in top five. Yeah. Um, I've done jazz. And, I love jazz. <laughs> yes. Um, and I've done theater, you know, um, and I sort of started to do Afrobeat only because I felt like it. When I came here, we, were, we used to go into studio with people like um, 
Oh, it was a wonderful guy who, who did my song. Uh, Kill Beats. Kill Beats, okay. And, you know, and he's playing, you know, this Afrobeat. I can't dance it because I haven't got ass. <laughs> but, but I've got, I've got a low in here. <laughs> yeah, I, have you got some? You don't have ass. I don't have. You're as white as I am. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so I, I can write because I've written for, I mean, I've written so many songs for mm -hmm. different people. So um, I just start writing and I go with how I feel. So I don't think, okay, just because it's Afrobeat and it's meant for the young, I can't do it. And music is music. Anybody can do music. Anybody should be able to do music. They do put people in a pocket here too much, though. Okay. Um, in the UK, it's not like that. In America, it's like that a little bit. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I just think you have to allow people to do music when they feel like it. So first, it's good. There's some crap ones out there, though, mm. let's be honest. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I hear them like, dugo, 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 dugo. And everybody's on the dance floor going, dugo, dugo. <laughs> I'm thinking, yay, you be for the Nobody knows what the words are. It's just like, yeah. doesn't matter, yeah. you know. <laughs> but then, I, I want to find out, what is the best advice a fellow musician gave you when you started your career? The best advice. Oh, I've had so many um, advice, but I'll tell you a story. Um, I remember, this is far on in my career, I, mm. was, um, I took a break after my third child, and I was signed to a, a label called Pandemonium. And, you know, big things were about to happen. You know, I've gone into the studio, recorded an amazing soul jazz um, album. Um, I was at the height of my career, and um, I got pregnant. Okay. And then... No, it was cool. It was cool. But what happened was I was asked, you know, obviously I couldn't tell my record company. I should have been able to. Mm -hmm. But you know, I was a little bit worried. I mean, now I would have said sort of. But then I know I was, they spent so much money on me that I felt, oh, my God, I can do it. Steph, you can do it. Just go for it. And I was seven months pregnant. And I was asked to do a big show. And in this event was, um, uh, what was his name? Beckham's wife and... Madonna was Victoria. there, yeah. and a few other people. And I turned out, and I went with a friend of mine, okay? And I'm wearing this white top, black trousers, and a long coat, and I was seven months pregnant. And oh. I remember walking in, and what I told her was, when I'm talking to people, my management still didn't know I was pregnant. Oh. I was telling her, if I turn one way, she should make sure she shadows me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so, so my stomach is not showing. So she was shadowing me, my poor friend. She was shadowing me so nobody would see. And I remember uh, my manager pulled me along to go and meet uh, Madonna. I stood there. My friend was like standing in the corner. And I stood, stood like this with my... She looked at me and instantly she knew I was pregnant. Mm. Oh. She said, girl. Oh, she didn't say girl. I can't remember what she said. But something like, wanted. Why are you yeah. hiding it? I mm. see it. I see it. And I'm thinking... She said, listen, embrace who you are. Embrace it. If they don't want you, move on. Mm -hmm. okay. And that was a really, really, because we're born, I think, and she's August born too, isn't she? She's a bit feisty. And that was the first time I was meeting her, and that was everything. Considering, you know, she was a go-getter. She was a businesswoman. She didn't really have a family. You know, she did what she wanted. And there I was, a mother of three and pregnant. And, you know, at a point of my career where I was taking off. And what she said, although... It didn't relate to her, mm -hmm. oh. but she could see my yeah. soul and she could see that I could do anything. She said, listen, just own it. Let them know you're not going anywhere. And that was the end of that. And I did. Then there I told them they didn't get rid of me. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> but yeah. looking at how, at how successful you are with your music, do you think you would have had that sort of success if you had been in Ghana doing everything? God, no. <laughs> no, because... I mean, it's, I, I hate sitting here and, and sort of um, throwing it out there with, I don't really want to you know, insult anybody or label people. <laughs> but I really think that it's just, just sometimes it can be a little small-minded. You know, mm. we have to broaden our horizon and allow people in. There's mm. some really amazing new art, artists around. Mm. And we listen to the same thing. Yeah. And we give the same people the same yeah. awards. And there's the same every year. And they are bored, even those people you keep giving awards to. <laughs> they are even bored. Because yeah. it's like, the music proves it. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, why? Why allow the young ones who are out there, there's like, not just young ones, some older ones who are doing something. Let them, you know, listen to their music, promote them, give them a chance. It can't always be about money, you know, for your own people. Because mm -hmm. we're, it's not like in the UK. We can't do the same things they do in the UK and the US. Because we're smaller mm -hmm. and we're still developing. And we shouldn't be, because our music is amazing. Well, not all of it. <laughs> but 
But the music, you know, some of the music is really good and some of them could actually cross over beautifully. But you can't play the kind of music that only Ghanaians will listen to abroad. And, and, and that's what, I mean, we're, yeah, we're doing. What, what? I mean, I'm doing some of that as well, actually. <laughs> because, I mean, I've done that kind of music yeah. that people listen, but now I want you guys to, li you know, listen. So, I mean, I'm sitting here saying that, but I, I've done two or three mm. that nobody would listen to in the UK. But, you know. <laughs> you've, you've been out there for a very long time, and we've, we've also been talking about pushing Ghanaian music out there to the rest of the world. What kind of music do you think that the people out there, um, you're trying to read the market in the UK, the US, would listen to when it comes from, to, um, from Ghana? Some have made the argument that we need to be authentic, we need to do their high life, we need to let them, give them something different that they're used to. Others also think that because you want to get the appeal from them, you need to you know, let it sound a little bit like them so that they could understand the music you're putting out. Which one of them do you think that people outside there would, would react best to? Well, first and foremost, I think people will listen to music if it's good. It doesn't matter, mm -hmm. really. So um, I honestly think being authentic, first, to be authentic, you need to understand who you are. And I think most artists um, going to music here, not always for the love of it, is always because they think of the fame and the money they're going to be making. I'm not saying all, but some really, it's not really about the music. So then that, the growth can be stunted. But I think with the kind of music we write, because not everybody can speak English very well, and they don't have to. Mm. But what they have to do is research and read. Read and understand what people are, um, are listening to and understanding. And um, how you construct the English is also very important. I could write some very, very simple lyrics, but how I put it together will make somebody outside want to hear it mm. and listen. Just because your people here may not want to hear because they think already I brought a but it, it doesn't have to be brothelized. Yeah. You can still say it in your own um, dialect, but then the construction of it has to be better. And that's what sometimes I think we're lacking. Because some of the music can be really good, but the way it sounds, people can just, you know, outside, not just here, but stand back and go, okay, what, what, was, that, what was that all about? Mm. And, and I think that's what we need to learn. So I think when it comes to music and writing, because a lot of artists, when they get signed, they want to write themselves, when you're not a writer. If you're not a writer, don't write. Please, sit down, let somebody do it. It's okay. If you work a deal with people, you still make money. You just want it to cross over. So don't wait for somebody outside who's big to write for you. Write with people who know how to. Find poets. There's some great poets around here. Let them write some music. Because you, that's what I used to do. Write just the lyrics and send it out. My management will send it out. And whoever, whomever wanted it will put it to music. I get paid. I don't care who has it. You know, and it's important. Just write, you know, lyrics. Listen to. Okay, so we are having an interesting conversation. But yeah. then when we come back, I know you have been empowering young women. Yeah. People look up to you. And there's this whole controversial question that pops up <laughs> when we come back i know i will ask that question don't go anywhere still want to i'll be naked to when she comes back <laughs> and then answer the question. <laughs> and so that is go to girl from Stephanie Benson. And Stephanie loves to empower women, young women. And in an interview, she said that um, women should enter into relationships as uh, independent women and stop relying on men. Stephanie, my question is, should ladies be bothered when they are being asked a question, what do you bring on the table? Well, I mean, First of all, I don't. Who's asking that question? The men, guy. This guy likes to. <laughs> men, uh, men do ask those questions nowadays. Okay. Like, what do you bring on the table? And you know what the women say? I am the table. <laughs> I to be the table and a wide one too. After five years. <laughs> and then you think you're looking at the other girl who's walking by because that table is too big. Yeah. But I think yes, you you are right. I'm. I don't think the men should be asking that question because when you're in love with somebody and Thank when you, you want to marry somebody um, for love, that's not something, the first thing that comes to your mind. Mm. But what I think I want the women to think is the mindset for the women, not for you to mm -hmm. ask. Yeah. So they have to go into the relationship thinking, um, what, do, what do I, what is my self-worth? Mm -hmm. See, I'm coming to the relationship. What if something happens? You know, I know nobody wants to think about what if, yeah. what if. But unfortunately, nowadays, 
the market is big. So the, the what ifs are there. Mm -hmm. So when you're going into a relationship, you have to be secure in yourself that if he's messing around or for any reason or you're unhappy, sometimes you just fall out of love. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just not him cheating, maybe it's not whatever. You know that you, you can help out or walk away. Mm -hmm. But some women stay because they have nothing. And then, and I speak to so many women when I started talking about, you know, uh, sex and whatnot on my page. Mm -hmm. God, the amount, I couldn't sleep. I used to sleep like four in the morning. My husband would say, put it down. Wow. Because I love, because I love, because I love, because I love, because I actually came to me with such despair because they're married and they don't know where to go, what to do. There's some stories we don't have time, but I could tell you some stories. It will make your hair curl. It was shocking. And, and some of the people that we know. And I, and I think that we have to start thinking about what it is we have and what we bring besides love and affection and a good blowjob. But, you know, it's like all of that. You heard that, right? Yeah. I heard, yeah. I heard, okay. I, I just had to. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, all of that is one thing. Some, some women say, oh, I rock his world. Listen, there'll be always be somebody else who can rock his yeah. world. Though. Yeah, yeah, Yo. true. Mm. Look at me. Yeah, you know, all it is. The next person who walked by would be, oh, yeah. And I'll be, who? So, you know, I just think you have to, what you have to bring mm -hmm. to the table is not, obviously, not just love, not just body, because that will change when you have children. Yeah. But it's also financial security for yourself mm. and your children. Very important. One thing that I say to people that they always, guys always say, huh? Is always have a joint account. I think that, you know, you could have your separate account where you put some money in, mm -hmm. and she could also, but between the two of you, if you're living together and you're, married, I'm not saying if you're not married though. Yeah. So when you're married, you should always have a certain amount that you both put in every month. That helps. That makes you actually want to do better. But obviously when the woman has children, she can't. There's not everything that you can do. Me, I can do anything. I was working all through my children, but I'm an exception and there's a few yeah. who are too. So I think you should have a joint account so you can both put money in there while you're working your life out. That is something I think is vital in any relationship. I made my children do it. My, my oldest daughter is married to a Nigerian man. He came to us. I said, eh, where's he going? Thank you, Carlton, you be. I don't see any money. And no, I said, we'll pay all the bills and then all the extras. You can use your own money yeah. to do. Okay. That's we are about to wrapping up. So. Yeah. So um, we'll talk about your new music in a bit. But quickly, um, your song was Samini. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it had a lot of. Uh, give me the, one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had a lot of. Uh, Turn me over, sliding in. Give me one more. <laughs> take so a break, you, puppet. I don't like you talk. <laughs> and give me one. Uh -huh. But, but uh, how do you take it, really? And of course, some of the the the, the videos on on social media. You know when. Uh, you, how, how do you take it? I mean, people say that. Oh, Stephanie, you shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't. No, no, it shouldn't, it shouldn't work. I mean, who cares about shouldn't? I mean, they, you, listen, live mm. your life. It's all good. I don't judge it. I don't care. Okay. I really don't care that much. So you can do whatever you wish. Some of the things I hear on my DM from mm. women, um, I don't judge them. I never do. I don't think, hey, girl, you're new. No. Why would I do that? Everybody has a reason for what they do and who they are. And, you know, so just because some woman sleeps with four or five guys, um, you know, maybe she's going into survival mode. Who am I to sit and say, hey, you can't do that. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I've never been that person, never will be. I don't judge people. Okay. So I do what I like. I do high, you know, um, what makes me feel good. People will say I'm a role model, but I think that my, you know, what I'm showing to people is freedom. For women, okay. my husband, my children, they're all a bit secure and happy. You know, okay. so if you don't want to see that, you yeah. don't want to see <laughs> always a part of me. Yeah, yeah. And, and lastly, what's your secret to looking good? Um, lots of water, exercise, the other type of exercise. <laughs> and then uh, um, just freedom of mind. Okay. Mm. And back to the music. Uh, oh, we have yes. a new one. Yes. New one called Asimava. You people, you might kill me. <laughs> So I want you guys to love me first before you listen to that song. <laughs> okay, because do you want me to give you just a little bit? Do yes, I have time? Yes, okay. yes, do. And I'll, I'll skip the chorus I, and just give you the rap. It's okay. a rap, by the way. Oh, yeah. there's a rap in there. I brought Steph Dinas in my back and a fool. Many be in a mum, I did you think I came to fool or what? Otherwise, I could be chicha in so when I said I'm speaking in tongues, bringing out true facts. Yeah, yeah. Prepping you for the real stats. Yeah, yeah. Listen, wow. let me break yeah, yeah. it down to you. Asamaba. Uh-huh. <laughs> Hey, okay. And then Stephanie I break it down. Okay, okay. 
okay, that's <laughs> nice. So it's, it's out on all the <laughs> digital platforms. Yeah, well, it's it's not totally out totally yet. Out. It's going to be out hopefully in a couple of days before I go, and okay. and the video will come later. But the video, mm. Mm. I can't wait for that mm. one. I okay, mean. <laughs> okay, it's uh, I've, I've, uh, we've enjoyed every bit bit of this conversation, and uh, yeah, we you. really do appreciate you coming, Stephanie Benson, our guest for today, and of course, you can follow on social media. I'll send uh, it to come over there and, sh and snog you, Kakra. Hey, hey. On, on, so Let's you know what? Let's get on. To, I've been following on Let's social see. media. <laughs> On all, on all platforms. <laughs> my name is Desiphany, the star boy. And I'm yeah. taking... I am and taking he's going to enjoy. It's a wrap. It's a wrap. See, you can follow me on uh, social media, Harriet. Add D Add is A D D I. But this season, Harry, to go and enjoy something. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, happy birthday to Sandra. I don't know if I don't do this. Happy birthday to you, Sandra. <laughs> Donor of uh, Parliament and uh, also to Salasi Bright, thank you so much <laughs> for watching. We're out. We'll be back tomorrow with an all ladies affair right here on Entertainment Review. Bye bye.